I finally decided to do the final shape campaign on my Titan and test out some different builds with it. Prismatic Titan seems like a good idea with triple consecration and point contact brace thunderclaps, but I decided to go a different route because Shattered just got buffed and Titan is the best class at spawning several different crystals and spamming them all throughout the map. They do quite a bit of damage now with their buff and I think it's a pretty fun build. This build is in no way perfect, but it suits what I need it to do. If you want to change anything up, feel free, but without further ado, my name is Trig, and let's get into it. This whole build fully relies on the idea of shattering anything we possibly can, whether it be crystals or frozen enemies, to create a nice AoE that now does double damage thanks to the buff it got on Final Shape. And since we want to shatter as many crystals as humanly possible, I went with the exotic of choice, Horfrost Z. This will turn our barricade into a wall of stasis crystals as long as we have a stasis subclass equipped, which we do have behemoth since we are on stasis, so that works perfectly. <laughs> Moving over to our abilities, of course we're going to use Glacier Grenade because we want to shatter as many things as possible, so this grenade is perfect for creating another wall of stasis crystals to get more AoE damage out. We have Rally Barricade on just because it's Rally Barricade. I don't think the cooldown between the two matters for Horfrost Z. It, I think it has its own internal cooldown. But if it does matter, Rally would be the one that we have to choose. Our only choice of Super is Glacial Quake, but we won't be using this Super too much because of the weapons we have equipped on this build. But we'll get to that when we get to the weapons section. Our first aspect is Diamond Lance. Diamond Lance is a very unique ability as whenever you shatter or kill enemies with stasis weapons or abilities, you will now get a Javelin that spawns on the ground. You can interact with this javelin to pick it up and throw it at targets or use your melee ability to slam to the ground freezing everything around you. It is a very unique ability and very fun just to run around with. You can freeze many different targets with it, it creates a nice AoE, and it's just really easy to shatter stuff with. You can replace this very easily with Cryoclasm so that your slides will not shatter crystals since we're spawning so many, or Howl of the Storm if you want to make your melee ability spawn even more crystals. Those are both fantastic options to use as well, I just find Diamond Lance a little more fun to use. Our second aspect is going to be Tectonic Harvest because it just recently got buffed to add the newly implemented Frost Armor whenever we get a Stasis Shard. This also creates Stasia shards whenever we shatter a crystal or a frozen target, so the synergy is really good with the build that we are trying to create for giving us very nice damage resistance whenever we pick up those stasis shards. Frost armor is new to the game, but it's very simple with how it works, as each stack of frost armor we get will give us 4.5% damage resistance, and we get an extra stack every time we grab a stasis shard. This does add up to only a 22.5% damage resistance, which is nothing too crazy, but it's also nothing to like forget about. It's very helpful for keeping survivability in the builds, but we can increase this later in the video when we get to our fragments. Speaking of fragments, our first one is Whisper of Fissures. This fragment's very simple, as it just increases the damage and size of our shatter when we destroy a stasis crystal or defeat a frozen target. It's very simple, but very helpful towards the build, and always a nice inclusion to the build. Our second fragment is going to be Whisper of Shards. This is a very interesting one because whenever we shatter a stasis crystal, we will get a boost to our grenade recharge rate. Shattering extra crystals gives us more time up to a duration of 10 seconds. This is very helpful because you can get a little over half your grenade back just from this fragment alone. And if you pair it with our Horfrost Barricade crystals as well, you can get a full grenade back. So it creates a nice little cycle and starts a little blend of grenade, barricade, grenade. And you can get a nice little rhythm going because you can get even more grenade energy if you pay attention to the timer a little bit more because you get five seconds on that timer every time you destroy a stasis crystal. So that means if you space out the stasis crystal destruction every once in a while, you will get extra time on that buff giving you even more grenade energy. You can almost get a full grenade back if you space them out correctly and sometimes even actually a full grenade back if you're really min-maxing that timer. It's very helpful to the build. You can spam extra stasis crystals and that's the whole idea. Our next fragment is Whisper of Torment, which adds more to our grenade energy recharge because whenever we take damage with this fragment equipped, we get extra grenade energy. This did get buffed in the final shape to implement the new frost armor mechanic by having it give you extra grenade energy whenever you have frost armor. Frost armor is great because it decreases the amount of damage you take from targets while also making it so you get a ton more grenade energy back. I really noticed when I had this fragment on versus when I didn't. Very, very helpful. Whisper of Rhyme is our next fragment, and this fragment got a pretty big rework in the final shape because it no longer works how it initially did. Instead, it now buffs our frost armor, 
duration and maximum stack count. So without the fragment, Frost Armor will have a maximum of five stack count and 10 seconds of duration. With the fragment, this goes up to eight stacks and 13 seconds of duration. This is significant because it increases our damage resistance amount from 22% to 36. Extra 10% of damage resistance, count me in. Now our last fragment is really flexible as you don't need to have the same one I do on, but I have Whisper of Rending. This just makes it so my primary ammo weapons can one-shot all my stasis crystals, and it just makes it a lot more ease of use for when I'm trying to get that AoE damage. So I'm using a sidearm and I can just one-shot each crystal, destroy them all as fast as humanly possible, and try to get my grenade back quickly. This just speeds up the gameplay and I really like how fast-paced it makes the build. This is just a nice quality of life update to breaking stasis crystals as I think it's almost a necessity for these builds, but I know some people don't prefer it and might want to use something else. I would recommend something like the new Whisper of Chill which makes it so stasis weapon final blows can create stasis shards. So this will make it so you can refresh the uptime of your frost armor as well as giving you extra stacks easier. There are other options you can use, just pick what you prefer the most and let me know down in the comments if you think something's better. The weapons in this build are kind of catered towards the build. I would say only one weapon is a necessity, but it is our exotic, and that exotic is Aegir Scepter. At its core, this is just a stasis trace rifle, but if it, you read its exotic perk, you can read that whenever you get a final blow with this weapon, it generates a slowing burst around the target that you defeated. Think of incandescent, but with slows. This is very nice because you can freeze targets in the AoE around it very easily if you just get two kills, as well as whenever you defeat a target with this weapon, it reloads the magazine from reserves. This is just a very nice AoE weapon to clear a nice room of adds and make it so you don't have to reload as often because you are killing those adds. The cherry on top for this weapon is its catalyst, which reads, if you hold your reload button while you have a full super, it'll slowly drain your super but while that super is draining, your magazine will double in size, your beam will be twice as strong, and you will apply more slow stacks and freeze targets easier. So doing damage with this weapon applies slow stacks while in this state, and you can freeze targets just by shooting them. This is a very strong addition to the build because your super isn't the greatest on Behemoth Titan, but this makes it so you can turn that not great super into a very nice source of single target damage to any major in your way. As for your other two slots, your energy weapon is typically going to be locked into a primary ammo weapon. I chose the world drop sidearm because it comes with heal clip and it has a very nice rate of fire, but you can really use any primary weapon in this slot. My heavy of choice was Quillum's Terminus because I really love this weapon in D1 and I think it got done dirty in D2, but aside from that it comes with headstone and is a machine gun. So you can prop headstone as much as physically possible which means you can destroy more stasis crystals which gives you more grenade energy back and it just is a very nice extra step in this loop of spamming as many crystals as possible. Very helpful perk and I like to have it on a machine gun and that's what I'm using here. You can use various different stuff like using uh, the waveframe GL that we have, the craftable one from Throne World, or you could use something like a rocket so you can have extra damage. It doesn't really matter in this slot, but I do like to have headstone because it helps build the cycle. Taking a look at our mods, there's nothing too crazy going on here. We can start off with our helmet mods. We do have a stasis siphon here, so whenever we get a multi-kill with our stasis weapons, we can create an orb of power. Next up we have Ashes to Assets because those stasis crystal explosions do count as grenade kills so it gives us bonus super energy for our agers so we can proc that catalyst more often. As well as we have a heavy ammo finder, I do swap this out for a special ammo finder depending on what uh, weapon I want to use a little bit more. But this is a not needed armor mod but very helpful because you are using your special and heavy weapon a lot so you do want to swap between the finders typically. If you have another idea for a slot, this would be the mod to switch out. Moving over to our gauntlets, we are using a firepower because again, our stasis crystals do count as grenade final blows whenever we use our grenade for those crystals. So we get orbs of power from that. We are using focusing strike, which makes it so we get class ability energy whenever we get damage with our powered melee. And then we also have impact induction, which gives us grenade energy whenever we deal damage with our melee. These two mods are specifically on here because stasis shards inherently give melee energy, so we will have our melee up a lot. Even though it's not the most useful melee in the world, it will be up a lot of the time because we are generating so many stasis crystals, so we might as well use it to get ability energy back. 
your chest piece use resistances of your choice i typically use one of each but go for it whatever you are taking on you can use whatever you need for our legs this is where it gets a little interesting we are using a stasis weapon surge so we get 10 percent extra damage on our heavy and our agar scepter we, then we also have a recuperation the standard we get health back every time you grab an orb we are generating an okay amount of orbs i wouldn't say anything too too crazy but this does help you stay alive more because frost armor isn't technically enough to keep you alive but recuperation does add on to the survival factor of the build and then i have a stasis holster on this is strictly because i am using an lmg that does not have an auto loading feature and i also have agar scepter which sometimes the mag gets low it does reload itself over time but you will find that the mag does get low sometimes and stasis holster just makes it whenever the weapon's stowed so if i want to swap off my lmg to agars my lmg will reload in my back pocket over time this is a very underrated mod and i think it works perfectly for this build Moving over to our class item, we do have the classic build on four surges, which is just Reaper. So whenever we use our class ability, which we use a lot because we have four for us C, we will get an orb of power on our next kill. Then we have Bomber on, which will just give us a little bit of grenade energy whenever we use our class ability. And then we also have a time dilation to increase our surge timer from 10 seconds per armor charge to 15. Jumping to the artifact, there's not really too much in this artifact that helps with stasis builds as it's pretty focused on swords and prismatic as a whole. There is one artifact mod, Creeping Chill, in the dead middle of the artifact that makes it so your stasis weapon funnel blows against slow or frozen targets, release another burst of slow. Agar Scepter already does this pretty well, but this just makes it super, super consistent. It's not necessary, but you might as well grab it because there's not much else in this artifact. As for any other mod, the only thing I'd recommend is use an anti-barrier weapon if you are facing champions because stasis intrinsically can stun overloads and unstoppables fairly easily by just slowing and freezing them. And anti-barrier is the only one it really struggles with. There's not too much else in the artifact. Grab what you want for whatever build you have. If you're in a fire team, prismatic transfer and expanding abyss might be decent options, but make sure you know what you're using before you select it. This is typically the part of the video where I cover tips for the build, but the build's very simple as you just want to throw your grenade off cooldown and use your class ability off cooldown. You want to summon as many stasis crystals as possible to clear rooms as fast as possible, and you want to throw in a melee every once in a while, or pretty much off cooldown honestly, because stasis shards give you so much melee energy that you will probably have your melee up a lot of the time, which then can trigger our mods to give us your other two abilities back. Getting into more end game content, GM Nightfalls, this build still does see some success. You will need to play a little bit slower as things hit way harder and are a little bit more tanky, but the build is nice because you have on-demand cover whenever you want by throwing your grenade or using your glass ability, as well as if you destroy some of those crystals, you do get frost armor, so it increases your survivability because stuff's gonna do less damage to you. You will have to play slower because stuff is more tanky, like I said, so the AoE of the stasis crystals isn't gonna kill stuff as fast, but it still is a decent GM option. When it comes to a raid environment, this the build doesn't have too much DPS potential unless you swap out the heavy for like a cold comfort or another GL of some sort, or anything your fire team's using might help, but Prismatic Titan practically does this job better when it comes to boss damage. This is just a very good AoE build, but other than that, it's super, super fun. I recommend trying out this build. It's a good time, and if you guys like the build, like and subscribe for more, and I will see you guys later. Have a wonderful day.